Tonight Show. Folks, my first guest this evening is the only person in American history to have led the White House Council of Economic Advisors, the Federal Reserve, and the Treasury Department. Please welcome Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen. Thank you for the invitation. Uh, pleasure. Have you ever been on a late night show before? I've never been. You're gonna love it. It's great. <laughs> You've been called a genius at explaining arguments oh, no, no, simply no. and clearly. Others have said <laughs> this. I know you haven't said this to yourself, but are you explaining arguments simply and clearly? Can you explain how Close. inflation got so high? Because two years ago, everything seemed fine. Uh, even in 2021, on you and other members of the administration, believe that inflation was a small risk. What happened, uh, simply and clearly? That's a challenge. That is, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, we had a rapid recovery from the pandemic. When President Biden was elected, unemployment was quite high. It was close to 7%. And we put policies in place that generated a very rapid recovery. Unemployment quickly fell back into the threes. Where is um, it now? Where is it now? Three seven. Okay. So normally you wouldn't expect um, just because you had a rapid recovery uh, for inflation to rise very much, if at all. But it turned out the pandemic had very special impacts on the economy. Remember, everybody stopped spending on services. They were in their homes for a year or more. Um, they wanted to buy grills and fur office furniture. They were working from home. Mm. They suddenly started splurging on goods, buying technology. Um, you know, we were suddenly working mm. through technology. And bottlenecks started developing where supply in particular important sectors of the economy just couldn't keep up with demand. Amazon, uh, JP Morgan, Meta, Disney, Paramount, they've all done big cuts in anticipation of a recession. One doesn't seem well, to have shown up yet. Wh who's right? Are we headed for a recession? Because your counterpart in England says that they're already in recession and it's going to be the longest one since the Great War. So I believe there is a path to bringing inflation down while maintaining a strong, healthy labor market. You think it's possible we're not heading into a recession? Yes. I we had a rapid recovery. Growth has slowed down. I expect the pace of job creation to slow down. That's natural and expected when the unemployment rate is close to the lowest in 50 years. So I think we can take the heat out of the economy. And remember, Russia has conducted a brutal war against Ukraine, and that caused uh, gas prices to spike it's caused food prices to spike. It's creating hardship all over the world. And um, we're really trying to address those, those strains as well. That's another reason inflation went up, and we're trying to hold that down. Now, um, you used to be, as I said before, you used to be the head of the Fed, chairman of the Fed. What goes on in there? <laughs> Because there's lots of, you know, conspiracy <laughs> theories that the Fed is a cabal and you guys wear robes and sacrifice a goat and then... <laughs> and right before the goat bursts into flames, it tells well, you the new interest rate hike that you're supposed to say. How... how what is it... Why, why well, is it so secretive? Know, why is the Fed so secretive, Matt? Well, it used to be very secretive. And there was a famous book called Secrets of the Temple. Yeah. And then the philosophy... And it, it was thought once upon a time, I can no longer remember why, but that monetary policy would be most effective if it was most secretive. And the truth is that the Fed never even announced to the public what decision they had made about monetary policy. The first time that ever happened was in February of 1994. Before then, the interest rates would just change, and that's how we would find out? They would make a secret decision, and you had to be a Fed watcher, and you would watch the money supply numbers, and you really had to understand how Wall Street worked in order to realize they had changed the stance of monetary policy. 
meetings ended, they never even issued a statement. Um, this morning, you called the recent crypto crash, quote, a Lehman moment. Of course, a Lehman moment, as I understand it, is when one firm or large entity ends up being a synecdoche for a larger market that ends to a collapse of the entire system. Are you saying that crypto could collapse because of recent crypto failures? Well, I would say the collapse of this firm, FTX, was a Lehman moment for cryptocurrency sector and has had contagion. But um, fortunately, there hasn't been much contagion to the real economy. Um, investors have lost a lot of money. And to me, that um, points to the need for much um, more regulation of this sector. They, and this happened because um, this firm it was operating at mainly outside the United States. With no, with, with no oversight. With no real oversight, but even if it had been in the United States, there are real gaps. There's some super, there's some regulatory authority, but huge holes. And so this is a sector where innocent investors um, can really lose their money. Well, let me, let me ask you something about, uh, let me ask you this about crypto. Do you, does crypto make sense to you And on this level? I, <laughs> people like Ron Paul would say that after the United States went off the gold standard under Nixon, I believe, that, you know, we're now a fiat currency. Things are worth what they're worth because we say that it's worth something. It's backed by the full faith and credit of the United States, whatever that particular phrase, that term of art may mean. And so is crypto, where I just create a widget that spits out a coin that I declare a value and then that number of those sets a capitalization for all that crypto out there and then people get invested. So that $20 million, now people say, oh, that's worth $100 million and all that is created out of nothing. Does that make sense to you? Because there is no inherent <laughs> value to the actual item itself. Well, I, I have been pretty skeptical since the outset about what the value of crypto would be to the real economy. But because the United States has a fiat currency, is is the dollar make any more sense to you than crypto does? Yes, the dollar makes a lot of sense to Why? me. Why? Because it's a national currency that's well regulated by the Federal Reserve okay. that has a clear mandate and um, people who are accountable to the public and to Congress mm -hmm. to maintain um, the goals of the Fed, which is maximum employment, and low and stable inflation. Price and they know what they're talking about. They got the robes and, and they, the goat and everything. And they know what they're They got doing. the whole thing. Okay. Uh, they tell you what they're doing. Sometimes people misunderstand, but you know, they, they talk to you about what they're, they, well, one problem is there are 19 of them at full strength and they have slightly different views and people sometimes find it um, confusing. Now that you're no longer at the Fed, do they confuse you? Does Jerome Powell confuse you ever as the Treasury Secretary? Not, not especially, but... No. Uh, <laughs> we have to take a quick break, but when we come back, I will ask Secretary Yellen why her name isn't on our money yet. Stick around.